Hi everyone, and welcome to my review of Heroes of Annihilated Empires. Since the game's title is a bit of a mouthful, I'm just going to be calling it Empires for the sake of this review, and my sanity. Empires was released October 5th, 2006 by GSC Game World, who you might know as the developer of Stalker Shadow of Chernobyl. Unlike Stalker, Empires is a real-time strategy game with some action role-playing elements thrown in. If you've played Warcraft 3, the whole RTS plus hero thing will be familiar. Empires was the first instalment in what was to be a planned trilogy taking inspiration from games like Heroes of Might and Magic and Cossacks. Unfortunately, this trilogy never came to light after the poor reception Empires received and subsequent budget pullbacks from GSC Game World. The game's setting and storyline were created by a Ukrainian novelist named Ilya Novak. He described the game's genre as epic dark fantasy. A series of five novels were planned to support the game and by November 2006, three had been published. I had a look around to see if any of these books or their planned sequels were available online to read, but turned up nothing. After doing some research on Novak, it seems he's faded into obscurity since the game's release. I found some forum rumours online saying that he'd resorted to writing scripts for Russian softcore pornography. A user on another forum said he'd passed away, but none of these rumours can be substantiated. Empires is unusual in that it uses a 3D world map intermixed with 2D unit sprites. Heroes and bigger units have actual 3D models, but the smaller large quantity units are two-dimensional. I haven't seen this graphical choice much in the genre, and it adds a surprisingly satisfying quality to the game. Some people might see this as cheap and nasty, but I guess it's really a subjective thing. The reason behind this 2D decision was apparently to cut down on processing power, as there can be upwards of several hundred if not thousand units battling on the field. In my opinion, this is where Empires really shines. There are three modes in Heroes of Annihilated Empires. There's the Campaign, Skirmish Mode, and Online Mode. Since the game's been out for such a long time and there's no longer an online community, I stuck to the problematic campaign and skirmish mode with AI. No matter what race you pick, you start every skirmish or multiplayer game with one hero unit. You can either farm neutral enemies and level up your hero this way, or you can use the rally workers skill, allowing you to enter RTS mode. This will spawn workers and freeze your hero for 30 minutes. The flexibility of this option is refreshing, although if you don't enter RTS quick enough, you will find yourself overrun by the AI. There's some pretty deep RPG elements here, and your hero has tons of gear slots, spell slots, and a variety to choose from. These also differ from what race you choose, mixing things up even further. The game features four playable races which all obey the same mechanics of farming resources and producing military units. There are six resources in the game, food, iron, wood, stone, gold, and crystals. Some races do not need all the resources to develop. For example, the undead do fine without food and wood, while elves do not need stone and iron. This isn't something I've seen in an RTS before, and it mixes up any resource wars that might occur. So our first race is the classic elves, which in this game are called the Sylvan Folk. The first campaign of the game centers around them, as they are a fairly straightforward race to play. These guys are the typical fantasy creatures you see in most games, utilising archers, druids, treants, griffins and centaurs. When each race builds their first structure, a biome is created. For the elves, it's a green pasture that makes everything look natural and pure. Their worker units are comprised of fairies, and all of their structures are massive treehouses. The elves, I would say, fare better at range than close quarters, and are probably the least unique race in the game, but probably the best for beginners. Next up, we've got the Undead, known as the Legion of Ashes in this game. These guys have the sort of stuff you'd expect. Vampires, skeletons, zombies and mummies. Their biome is a graveyard type terrain and it kills all trees and other fauna close by when it spawns. The Undead are able to amass the largest armies in the game. Although this is offset by the sluggishness and low hit points of their units, they're still very powerful in numbers. Then we've got the Dwarves, known as the Mechanicians in this game. They employ a range of steampunk type machinery and long range weaponry. Their biome is a kind of desert and it paints the ground yellow. Their military consists of dwarven riflemen and militia, zeppelins, steam cannons and ornithopters. And lastly, there's the cryo race, which are essentially barbarians with a specialty in cold magic. This race is pretty unique from the rest of the common fantasy platter we see here. Their biome is of course a frozen ground. They have yetis, golems, sorcerers, mammoths and dragons at their disposal, and they all pack a pretty heavy punch. The game's single player campaign is notoriously difficult and filled with game breaking bugs, crashes and amateur voice acting. Help! Save me! 
walking corpses that should be rotting in the soil. Now they've risen to the surface and are attacking the living. It starts you off as an elven hero named Elhant, who's trying to save his people from an oncoming undead invasion. This is cheaply similar to Warcraft 3's plot, but we'll just ignore that for the moment. The levels in this campaign are unforgiving and beyond poorly balanced. The first mission has you escorting fleeing elven townsfolk from the undead. If you lose more than 10 of them, you fail the mission. I can't tell you how many times I wanted to put a physical copy of this game in a microwave as a result of failing this part. There are about 10 missions in the elven campaign that vary in difficulty and glitchiness. Due to a game breaking bug, I was unable to actually finish the last mission at all. This is unfortunate as it unlocks the next campaign which is for the undead race. So what's the verdict? Empire's story is extensive and complex to say the least, but the game has been so poorly coded the vessel which delivers the story hampers its telling. This was certainly a deterrent for me. Imagine someone tells you they've read a great book, but it's exclusively in braille. I mean yeah, you could go off and learn braille for the sake of reading the book, but it's likely you're just going to read something else. There's definitely something worthwhile hiding in this game, but you've got to be extremely patient if you want to get to the crux of it. I know it sounds tempting to spend hours of your time dealing with constant bugs and crashes to enjoy a 6 out of 10 story written by a Russian pornography scriptwriter, but I can assure you, it will disappoint. There's been an unofficial community patch which aims to clear up a few of the crashes the game has, but reportedly omens up a whole host of other issues. What a shitstorm. All in all, I wanted to review this game because I felt like it had potential, although what we got was a buggy mess that felt incomplete. Its saving grace, if you could call it that, are the huge unit battles you can partake in and a world that actually looks pretty beautiful. It's just a real shame this game wasn't taken care of by the developers after launch. I guess it didn't help that the story writer absconded to pursue a career in the Russian adult entertainment industry. I guess that really says it all, doesn't it? And I think that's a good place to leave it. As always, thanks for taking the time to watch my review guys, and I'll see you on the next one.